Hey there guys, it's your boy Nick on the ASMR Nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Akko 3084 75% mechanical keyboard, and the 75% of course refers to the layout. A 75% layout is a very space-efficient, relatively compact layout. In fact, here, let me show you. I brought visual aids. I came prepared. Uh, I have here two keyboards. One is a standard 10 keyless layout. Right there. This is the Drivo Blademaster Pro. And in my other hand, I have a 75% board. This is the Drivo Excalibur with some aftermarket keycaps on it. And if I stack them up, one next to the other, one on top of the other, like so, you can see that there are some significant space savings to be had with the 75% board. In fact, the footprint is barely larger than a 60% board, and yet, and yet, it's only lacking three physical keys relative to the significantly larger standard 10 keyless layout. And for that reason, the 75% layout is one of my favorites. However, weirdly, 75% keyboards are pretty uncommon. You don't see them very often. And this is what caught my attention about the board we're looking at today the Akko 3084. It has that desirable, space-efficient, but yet still very functional 75% layout. What's more, it's got genuine cherry switches, which is a plus for many people. Um, I'm arguably less of a fan of cherry switches than others, but on paper, anyway, it sounds good and it's a plus for some. Um, it's got both wired and wireless functionality, always a plus, and it's got some really nice looking keycaps made of high quality PBT plastic, uh, and the legends are inscribed using dye sublimation technology, which uh, basically means they'll never wear out. Some nice high quality keycaps on this board. However, it is missing, very notably missing, one desirable feature, and that is backlighting. There is no backlighting on the Akko 3084, not even white backlighting, let alone RGB. And as you know, RGB backlighting is all the rage these days. So at its original list price of 160 US dollars, the Akko 3084 seems pretty overpriced, I have to say. However, however, the folks at banggood.com have come to the rescue and they've given us a coupon code that you can use. It's down in the video description along with the link to the product and it brings the price of the 3084 down to a much more palatable uh, 80 US dollars. And at that price, it becomes a much more compelling option, especially considering the dearth of 75% layout keyboards. So, we're going to put the 3084 through its paces. I'll unbox it, I'll test it out, we'll of course take a very thorough look at it, and then at the end of the video, as usual, I will run down my pros, my cons, and my verdict on the Akko 3084. Banggood, of course, kindly sent over a review sample for us to look at here today. So let's dive right in and take a closer look at the Akko 3084 75% mechanical keyboard. And here we have the Akko 3084 in box. And you know what? It's a pretty nice looking box. It's got this very consistent color scheme, it's not gaudy or gamery, and everything I can see so far looks to be reasonably um, professional. 
professional looking. Not always the case with these keyboards out of China. This is certainly a step up. And I, I seem to recall that was the case with the last Echo board I reviewed as well. They generally have their aesthetic down pretty well. Uh, okay, so we have the Echo branding over here. Got the product identifier, 3084. We have the Bluetooth logo because this is a wireless keyboard. Well, wired and wireless. And then we have this here. It says silent. Silent. That's a funny thing, because I don't think there's anything especially silent about this board, except for the fact that it does use Cherry MX Red switches, which are linear, and have a low activation force, uh, actuation force, excuse me, and so they tend to be a bit quieter than most other mechanical switches, but they are not Cherry MX Silent Reds, which are further dampened for even quieter typing. They're just run-of-the-mill vanilla Cherry MX Reds. Moreover, this board is available with other uh, switches. You can get it with browns, which would not be particularly silent, and you can get it with Cherry MX Blues, which would definitely not be silent. So. I'm not quite sure what the silent uh, subtitle there is trying to get at exactly, but nevertheless, there it is. Over on the left-hand side of the front of the box, we have, or the right-hand side, pardon me, my left, your right, we have an image of the keyboard, probably a render, honestly, showing off that nice old-school colorway with the sort of gray, two-tone gray look. And then we've got some accent keys uh, that are popping in this kind of light blue, which honestly actually really works, I think, with the overall aesthetic. Uh, the case is in black, as you can see here. Um, but, never fear, if you do not like those blue accent caps, uh, there are, uh, at least according to the product page, there are replacement alternative caps that fit the colorway of the rest of the board. So, I will admit I'm not a big fan of this, like, skull logo. It's Akko's logo. It's a skull with headphones on. A skull kitty. I think it's a cat. It just looks, that in particular, looks just gamery and not very professional. All right, we have the Echo logo. It says here, echogear.com. We've got nothing around there, nothing around there. This is a, a slip uh, over the main box. We've got, hey, look at big sticker of a Cherry MX Red switch. So you know exactly what kind of switch you're getting barcode and such, Cherry MX, authentic switches, and then a bunch of Chinese that I cannot read, contact stuff for Echo by the looks of it, and then around the back here, actually not that much, we've got a schematic kind of stencil picture of our keyboard here with that lovely 75% layout. One of my favorites, honestly. And then over here we've got some points about what kind of features this board has. Bluetooth version 3. <laughs> that is a pretty old Bluetooth standard, I have to say. Now, in terms of actual functionality when it comes to this board, it probably doesn't matter too much that it's an old Bluetooth standard, but still, uh, 4.2 would be much uh, more up to date. Equipped with an 1800 mAh lithium-ion battery, that 
uh, is evidently enough battery to power this thing for 120 hours between charges, 120 hours of continuous use, and over 150 hours of standby. That's pretty good. You can certainly manage to plug your board in every 120 hours, I would think, of, uh, of usage. Um, I think that's not too far off the kind of battery size that you're seeing in mobile phones these days, but obviously a keyboard uses a lot less power than a mobile phone. An 84 key compact keyboard, yes indeed. USB Type-C connection, big thumbs up. Function layer provides more functions. Self-evident, but yeah. PBD die subbed keycaps, which is one of the big selling points of this board. The caps look quite nice. We will, of course, evaluate that in just a moment. One of the other big selling points, genuine Cherry MX switches. So if you are a Cherry Switch diehard, then this board has you covered. You do, of course, pay a premium for that, though. And more and more these days, I'm feeling like that premium isn't really worth it. There are many very competent Cherry MX clones that are, you know, can be had for a lot less money. And there are, in fact, many improvements over Cherry MX's original switches that can be had for less as well. So, but I understand some people put a lot of stock in a name. Give the dimensions and the weight. And it puts the weight at 0.85 of a kilo, which is pretty hefty. And this board does feel decently weighty. All right. Shall we open it up and take a look? I think we shall. So as I said, this is a just a slip cover. Oh, look at that. Then <laughs> get advertisements. So the inner box is plain black. We have the Echo logo in this purplish, shiny kind of color. I'm colorblind, don't judge. Purpley pinkish magenta, perhaps. And, um, and that's it. Nothing else anywhere on this box. Kind of shiny black, honestly, it doesn't look that great because it's been scuffed up a bit. I should say, though, that the overall condition of this package is uh, better than the last few keyboards I've received from Banggood. Let's put it that way. I cannot remember who this shipped with, this particular one. But it, I don't think it was DHL. I had bad experiences with DHL shipping previously, so keep slagging them on that. But anyway, this one, it's a little bit beat up, but it's much better than others I've seen. So the box opens, a little tab here, and then quite simply like so. And inside we have a traditional cardboard padding, which, you know, it gets the job done. At least it's all recyclable, no styrofoam waste. And that's around all sides. There's a bit of a buffer. So that's good to see that the keyboard appears to be sufficiently protected in shipping. Then we've got a dust cover, which, let's be real, no one really uses that. No one puts the dust cover, well, I can't imagine many people put the dust cover on their keyboard once the keyboard's out on their desk. But should you choose to do so, <laughs> there it is. I mostly look at it more as protection in shipping. I'll lift that off.
that side. And underneath we have the conventional kind of foamy plastic bag that you see in a lot of packaging. Again, we'll keep this protected, which is nice. Put the keyboard aside for a moment, just to examine what else might lurk within. We've got an Echo Series 3 um, instruction manual. This is, appears to be shared between the 3084, which is the model we're looking at here, and the 3068, which was the successor to the uh, Tada 68, which I reviewed some time ago. I'll put a link up here for you. Um, just up there that you can click through if you want to see that review. But ACO manufactured that one as well. Then they followed it up with the 3068. The manual appears to be <laughs> exclusively in Chinese. Echo Macro 1.0, which is presumably their software for configuring <laughs> for configuring macros and such, but hey, it's all in Chinese. So that's not very useful to me might be useful to you if you can read Chinese characters. I suppose you could use your phone and like the uh, Google Translate app to take pictures and translate that way, but nonetheless uh, the lack of an English manual is a bit disappointing. This is probably some kind of certification quality check thing. Okay, uh, well, there's got to be a power cable in here somewhere, and those extra caps, so they must be hiding back here. And indeed they are. The cable supplied by Echo. Oh, look at that. We got some nice attention to detail. We've got an Apple branded uh, Velcro cable wrap there. We've got a little protective cap on the USB A end of things. Uh, it is in fact an Apple branded cable also, with the logo and the name on the housing. A ferrite choke right here. And then on the USB-C end, we've got also more Echo branding. That's kind of nice. That gives it a more premium feel, having that branding rather than just a generic USB-C cable. And USB-C, always good to see. No pun intended. Uh, too many manufacturers these days seem to cheap out and go with the micro USB still, but that's such a dying connector. Reversible USB Type-C is very much the modern standard of preference. So that's good to see. And here we've got... Oh, another nice surprise. Oh my gosh. Look at this, guys. <laughs> that's everything in the box, by the way. Let's just take this box out of the picture. Look at what we found here. Oh my gosh, we've got this bright pink ACO branded keycap puller. Now, okay, let's pull it out. type keycap puller for starters, which is great. They are more efficient, they are easier to use, they are less likely to damage your keycaps by scratching them. So props for the wire keycap puller echo. Uh, but this handle, can we just talk about this for a second? It's 
got the aqua branding on it. It's bright freaking pink. And then it's got this little paw on the end. It's adorable. You can just touch you with the paw. Just touch you with the paw. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, that's real cute. I That delights me more than it should. Worth it. Worth it for the keycap puller alone, am I right? Where else are you going to find such a fine product? Probably on, like, Echo's web store for a buck or something. But anyway, there it is. Uh, big fan. Big fan. Okay. Uh, and then, as promised... Our replacement keycaps. And this will give us a great opportunity to inspect these caps before we pull the board out. But you can see they're a nice thick PVT material. Over a millimeter, I reckon. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, almost zero flex because they are very thick. And uh, they've got dye sublimated legends, which is to say uh, these legends are never going to wear out. The uh, dye is chemically bonded uh, and infused into the plastic, essentially. Uh, so it's not printed on top. It's actually infused into it. And uh, I don't think it'll ever wear. You could use this for probably the rest of your life, you know, typing on these caps every day, and I don't think you would ever lose the legends. The caps might shine up a bit, but not even that much, because PBT, as you may know by now, is a harder plastic compound than ABS. It is much less resistant to finger oils and shining up with repeated use and friction. So this texture that you see, this light texture on these caps, uh, should persist for a very, very, very long time. Not much else to see here. Standard Cherry MX style uh, stem sockets there. Uh, no mold lines on the outside to speak of. These are all OEM profile. So, there we've got our escape key. All just scooped for your fingers, your fingertips. Nothing out of the ordinary there. They do sound very nice, don't they? Okay. Let's put those aside and look at the board proper. Okay, let's pull it out of the bank here. And there it is. Uh, these keycaps, really nice. It's the first thing that jumps out at me. They look really appealing. They feel really appealing. Uh, the font treatment, the legends, look very um, clean. Uh, some dye sub work can occasionally look a bit fuzzy, but these ones look quite sharp. And um, overall, it's aesthetically very appealing out of the box. Let's take a little cruise around here, though, before we come back to the, the caps and the switches and all that. So, we've got some very subtle ACO branding right up on the front right corner of the board here. I don't mind that at all. I don't really like the ACO logo, but it's subtle enough that that doesn't bother me in the least. Um, if we carry around. You see it's just this black, slightly textured ABS 
all the way around the front, all the way around the side. We come around the back, and it's the same. We've got our USB Type-C port. Same black plastic all the way around. The edges are rounded and smoothed off, so there are no really hard corners. Even these edges have been uh, uh, beveled a little bit there. And from the top, looking down, we have exactly the same sort of low profile frame bezel, if you will, on all sides of the board in black. And that looks pretty nice. Uh, pop it around to the side here. You can see that it has a built-in uh, slant to it, a little bit of a tilt. So uh, usually this is on the order of five or six degrees, whatever they think is comfortable for most typists. I generally am a fan of boards that let you adjust that yourself. Uh, with pop-out feet and whatnot, um, but it is the style these days to just have these cases that are slanted. Does it bother me? Not really, but I prefer to have the options of, uh, you know, zero incline or, or up a bit. I suppose I would, but uh, it's not a deal breaker. Anyway, that inclination is provided by the back portion of the chassis, which we flip it over and take a look. Oh, would you look at that? It does have feet. After I say it doesn't. Um, so you could, should you really wish, uh, put it up at a really severe angle. Oh, look at that. It's got more than just one foot. It's got two feet on each side. Okay, so you can never get it to lay totally flat because, again, the case has a, a built-in angle there. But what you could do is you can bump it up even further on uh, level one. These tiny feet. Or level two with these bigger feet. I don't know who would want a keyboard that sits up at this much of an angle. Like, I don't think I've ever typed on a keyboard at this much of an angle. But you know what? Now that I've done it, now that it's sitting here, it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> it doesn't feel, like, drastically unergonomic like I thought it might. Anyway, each of those little feet has, or uh, little flip-out feet, has a little rubberized pad on it to prevent slippage. And the case itself features four rubberized feet. One, two, three, four, to prevent skidding. Otherwise, not too much to see on the back. And we do have a couple of items down here. We've got an on-off switch. Thank goodness, I love hardware on-off switches. If I can flip it, there we go. On, off. And that's for the Bluetooth wireless connectivity, and then a pairing um, light, I guess. Hmm. When I flash or flip it on, it doesn't flash. Oh, although, look at that, on the front, one of our lights, our indicator lights is flashing. Oh yeah, and I didn't actually notice that on our first little cruise around. I saw it in the box art, but we have all our indicator lights built into our bezel up here. I'll try and set it at an angle so you can see. But they're just embedded up there. In very clean, minimalist fashion. I like that a lot. Uh, does it say on them which one it's? It does not, but I'm sure you can figure that out easily enough. So props to Echo, and each actually little indicator LED falls between the keys in a very clean way that makes them nicely visible. Um, back around the back side here again, and I'm not quite sure what that little pairing hole is all about. <laughs> but otherwise we've got just the product name, made in China, 
some certifications, that kind of thing, and not much else. So, um, visually, it's nice and clean. The black ABS certainly gets the job done, although the lack of any metal on the case does cheapen the affair a little bit. And I must say, it feels a little on the hollow side. You can hear that, can't you? It's got a certain hollowness to it, which is conferred by this section back here, which I guess doesn't have much in it. Um, which really lends to the the idea that they could have just cut out this whole chunk here and just had a flat case, but anyway, that is not what they chose, so here we are. Uh, let's, while we have it in hand, let's give it a quick flex test. Let's see how that goes. Okay. So a bit of creakiness and a bit more flex than most other boards actually than I've had through here. Watch again, you'll see what I mean. Now granted, I'm reefing on this pretty hard. I don't recommend you do this with yours, <laughs> but uh, just for you guys, <laughs> I'll, I'll crank on it. Um, but uh, that's, again, attributable, I assume, to this plastic case, which, yeah, it gets the job done, but it's certainly not, certainly not, um, yeah, that doesn't sound good, does it? It's not making me, uh, you know, feel like this is a super premium product, which is too bad, because these caps, on the other hand, look really, really nice, and if they are all as thick as those replacement caps that we looked at, then uh, they are, in fact, some very high quality keycaps. Um, let's quickly talk about the layout here. This is a non-standard layout. Uh, keycap compatibility, well not tragic, is uh, also not going to be excellent. Um, and that's because of this, this little mess over here. Let's just get this a little closer to the camera. So you can see, I've got a 1U Alt function and control key over here on the right hand side of the board. And that allows Echo to cram in dedicated arrow keys. We are only 1U, one row wider than a 60% board. 60% would end there. We get an extra row, which gives us room for those dedicated arrow keys and a variety of nav cluster keys to come along for the ride. Uh, we get an end key, a page uh, down and up, and a home key, and the ever-popular dedicated delete key. Uh, end and home, very useful for me when I'm editing my video. Delete, dedicated delete key in the top right corner, always a pleasure and also dedicated arrow keys. Excellent to see. The uh, downside of all that is that, uh, of course, these 1U alt function control keys are not included in every set of keycaps. In fact, many cheaper keycap sets will not include them. Likewise, this shortened shift key, which has had to be chopped a little bit to fit in this up arrow, uh, once again, rarely included in cheaper keycap sets. And another consideration is that while most keycap sets will have an end and a page up, page down, home and delete key, um, they will not be presented in these heights. You see the uh, OEM profile specifies certain heights and profiles for each row. And uh, on a typical keyboard, uh, all your nav cluster keys are going to be up here on R4 and R5. Um, and so uh, they're going to be a higher profile. So your page up and page down, or excuse me, your end and page down from a standard keycap set are actually going to be quite a bit 
smaller than these ones here. They're going to be uh, like these ones here, if that makes sense. Now these middle rows, R3 and R4, I think are the same. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not quite sure of the dimensions of these things, but this end for certain will not look like this in most keycap sets. Uh, so anyway, it's a consideration. Uh, these top two rows here are identical profiles, and so you kind of get this, this interesting situation where the profile is scooped along here, and then doesn't really get any taller out here. The R5, I believe this is normally called, um, is not actually R5 height. It's another R4. I could have those those letters and numbers a little bit off. I don't remember exactly what the name of each height profile is, but anyway, the important take home is that you cannot just buy a $20 set of caps off AliExpress, slap them on here, and expect it to work. You're going to be missing a number of caps. Uh, now, if you are the kind of person who rolls uh, with more expensive caps, then well, Maybe not a problem for you, because there's usually extra add-on packs for uh, weird keyboard nerds like us uh, who buy expensive keycap sets and want to put them on non-standard layouts like this. Um, but really, having said all that, why would you want to replace these caps? Because these caps look awesome, in my opinion. Let's pull one of them off, just to get a closer look. Take a peek at the switch underneath. Good old arrow key. So you can see that these light blue ones are in fact just as thick and probably from the identical mold as the gray ones. Uh, and still nice and thick no flex, nicely textured, really high quality caps. High quality caps that just don't seem to pair quite so well with this case that just feels a bit cheaper. Which is too bad. It's too bad. Now, underneath, we've got a very traditional, old school looking Cherry MX Red switch. That nice bright red stem. And you can hear, of course, linear all the way top to bottom relatively low actuation force 45 grams or so um, and bottom out's not too loud but it's not cushioned the way it would be on a cherry mx silent red a little bit of ping but not too bad you can hear it if you listen Um, but one thing worth noting is that these are not Cherry MX RGB switches. They are just your standard Cherry MX switches with the opaque black housing. And of course, this keyboard does not have backlighting, like I said in the introduction. And that's perhaps one of the greatest drawbacks of this board. Um, and so it has no surface-mounted LEDs on the PCB. And... With no SMD LEDs, there's no reason to have translucent housings. So, Akko didn't do that. They just went with the opaque black traditional housings on the cherry switches. Now, you can install LEDs on this board. Um, that requires you to um, uh, get one of those little dome-shaped LEDs. I can't remember. There's a term for them. I don't remember what it is, but the little, you know, the little dome-shaped ones with the little legs. Um, and that actually sits on top of the switch here, not on the surface of the PCB. Uh, those types of LEDs tend to be a bit less uh, efficient, and in my opinion, the lighting tends to be less evenly distributed. So it's not an ideal solution, and of course, you'd have to get your hands dirty soldering. Uh, you'd have to solder all those little switch contacts, or all those little, pardon me, LED contacts to the board, the PCB underneath. 
So honestly, um, installing LEDs on here is probably more of a hassle than it's worth. Um, there are probably better options. If you want a 75% layout backlit board, uh, maybe look up uh, like the K KBD 75 or something like that. There are other options, although not that many, to be honest. 75% uh, boards are a pretty rare breed, so anyway, uh, but I would not buy this with the intention of installing LEDs. I just don't think it would be worth the hassle. A um, couple other things to take a look at here. Let's look at the stabilizers. Well, first of all, let's let's hear those stabilizers in action. Pretty good, not too heavily. Reasonably pleasant sounding. No, oh, that's rattling. Backspace isn't too bad. And left shift is pretty good, actually. That, that enter key is the worst offender here. Uh, but I don't think these stabilizers are lubed. I'm just judging by the sound and the feel. But let's pop off that enter key. So much. Meow. Meow. Uh, and look at it. It's interesting. I've literally never seen that before. The stems on the stabilizers are red to match the uh, to match the switches. I have never seen that before. That's kind of fun. Um, but no, they're definitely not lubed. Uh, they are probably Cherry MX stabilizers as well, but they are kind of rattly. Not about those rattly stabilizers, honestly. Uh, let's pop off one more here just to take a peek. Yeah, I greatly prefer stabilizers come factory lubed uh, because most people let's be real most people aren't going to get in there get their hands dirty and lubricate their stabilizers and I don't think it's that much work on the part of the manufacturer to pre-lube their stabilizers um, I'm not a keyboard manufacturer so I don't know for sure of course but it just seems to me like like they uh, they really ought to do that there's one more thing that I want to investigate here, and that's the back plate. I believe it's in black. I believe it's just steel. But let's just pull off a few more caps here to uh, see what's going on. There we go. And yes, indeed, it looks like a standard steel, black steel backplate. You can probably see it. There you go. Nothing fancy, but it matches the switches, so that's good. All right, well, my friends, that is that. Now, I'm going to go and investigate whether I can, first of all, get my hands on the software for this board. I'm hoping I can. I think I was able to find it for the Tata 68 from Echo previously, so... If I can, then the next segment is going to be looking at uh, Bluetooth connectivity and software. If not, we're just going to look at Bluetooth connectivity. Um, and I may decide not even to do that, depending. We'll see. I don't know. It's a mystery. But you guys will find out right now. So this would normally be the part of the video where I show off the lovely RGB backlighting on the keyboard. But wait, there's no backlighting on this keyboard. So then, normally, I would show off the software for the keyboard. But wait, there is no software for this keyboard. Yes, indeed, I did search for it. And what I came to realize is that the Echo Macro V1 functionality that they talk about 
in the manual and on the product page is actually built in to the board. It's a firmware thing. And I would love to show you how it works because my understanding is that it allows you to record macros without the use of software and then execute them uh, using the function, secondary function layer on the board. But I can't show you because all the instructions in the manual are in Chinese and there is no English manual. And I did try my darndest to use Google Translate and the, you know, the photo function where it'll either translate in real time or you can take a picture and it'll scan it. There's, um, there's a little flow chart uh, in this manual here, which you might remember. We looked at it earlier. Looks a bit like that. I know it's pretty dark here, so you can't really see it very well. But um, so that's what I tried to translate. Uh, and I just wasn't able to quite figure out what was going on. Uh, it sort of made some sense, and I experimented a bit, but I, I couldn't ultimately figure it out. And I was unable to find any reliable English translations online. So, unfortunately, I can't show you the macro, uh, the ACO macro v1 <laughs> functionality, uh, which is too bad. Um... And that's definitely something that I would love to see Echo change in future. All we need is an English localized manual or even just a bilingual manual. That's all it would take. And we could use that function on these boards. Um, so lacking the ability to show you that, what I'm instead going to show you is the Bluetooth functionality uh, because it's, it's really quite straightforward. So right now uh, I've got the keyboard plugged into my PC and uh, it's in USB mode. So this here LED underneath the tab key seems to always be on when it's in the wired mode, uh, as far as I can tell anyway. But to switch to Bluetooth mode, all you need to do is hold down function and hold down tab for about three seconds. There you go. You saw it blink a couple times. And then over here, one of the indicator lights blinked. That was indicating that it was connecting with my PC and it's now connected. Um, you can then swap between Bluetooth devices uh, that it's memorized. You can memorize up to three devices by holding down uh, a function and then it's E, R, and T. So I've got my PC bound to E right now. Why don't we try pairing with my phone and see how that goes. So we're going to hold down function and press R. And now this LED indicator is flashing again to show that it's back in pairing mode. And I'm going to just grab my phone here. And I'm going to bring up my Bluetooth devices. You know, the uh, scan for Bluetooth devices. And in theory, it should find it. Okay, it's found something. It's just kind of a big long hex string, but it shows up as a keyboard. Oh, there we go. Now it's got the right name. Hacko 3084. And we're paired. There we are. So now, if I open Let's say Google Docs. Uh, I should be able to just type, type, type. And indeed I can. I'll show you. I don't know how well this is going to show up. This is not very professional. But you can see it there. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, world. So, oh, hello, Wold. <laughs> I missed the R. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it does appear to be working. And testing on my phone, there is a small amount of noticeable latency. Um, but when I was trying it on my PC earlier, 
Let's switch back to my PC by going function E. Blinks. Presumably that means it's attempting to connect. Hmm, interesting. It's like it hasn't remembered my PC. Well, let's... Let's uh, go here and say add a device. Is it discoverable right now? That's funny. <laughs> it's not showing up as discoverable either. And it's definitely not connected. Well, let's switch back to wired mode. Okay, so now we're back in USB wired mode. Let's try switching back to Bluetooth. Okay, and it connects. What is it connected to? Does it connect to my PC or my phone? It's connected to my phone. Interesting. I must admit I had not tried this out with multiple devices here. I thought I'd do a little live demo, but... Well, let's turn off Bluetooth on my phone. Now it blinks. Like it's searching. Let's go function E. Okay, now we've got the fast blink. I think that means it's in pairing mode. Let's see if my PC will detect it. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Switch back to wired. That works. Switch back to Bluetooth. Blink, blink, blink. I wonder if I'm not holding down function E long enough. Ah, uh, I think that was the problem. Yes, now it's connected. Okay, so learning experience. When you're swapping between devices, you have to press and hold for about three seconds as well, just as you have to do when you're swapping between wired and wireless mode. All right, what I was going to say is that um, when it's connected via Bluetooth to my PC, uh, I found the, uh, the latency to be very low, uh, really imperceptible actually. Uh, granted, my Bluetooth receiver is just over there about a foot away. Um, but uh, as a general rule, I advise people against doing any serious gaming or any sort of reflex or reaction sensitive stuff uh, while in Bluetooth mode. It's fine for sitting on your couch and using with your HTPC or even just using on your desktop day to day if you want to be able to put your keyboard in your lap or whatever. But uh, for any serious um, sort of high quick response time gaming, uh, I recommend wired mode, even though, as I said, I've not noticed any perceptible lag here, and I've gamed uh, with the Bluetooth mode a little bit, and it's been totally fine, as far as I can tell. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, that's really all I have to show you, because again, there's no software, and there's no backlighting to speak of, um, from looking at the manual, I was able to discern, suss out, using Google Translate, that uh, if you do install LEDs of your own, uh, I believe it only supports white backlighting, and there are keyboard shortcuts for a, a few different patterns. It said something about a, a wave pattern or something like that, but of course... I don't have LEDs in here. It does not come with LEDs. So, And again, if you really want a 75% board with LED backlighting, uh, there are certainly better, easier options. So next up is the typing test.
let's get our clickety clack on.
chance to use this keyboard extensively over the last handful of weeks. You, of course, have had a chance to see it in great detail and listen to me typing on it just now. I'm going to give you my sort of subjective impressions of using the board before running down the pros and cons and giving you my final verdict. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to talk about here in impressions and day-to-day -day usage because it's not the most feature-rich of boards, is it? Um, but I will say that, generally speaking, I did enjoy my time with it. The typing experience is, well, it's a kind of a known quantity in terms of the switches. This uses Cherry MX Red switches. I am not personally a big fan of linear switches, so they don't really do it for me, but they're fine. Cherry switches are, of course, very reliable, very consistent in their performance, and if cherries are your thing, then, hey, good news for you. Uh, I will say that when I unboxed it, you know, I, I was saying that I thought it felt that, you know, like the case, the chassis was a little on the cheap side. It felt a bit hollow and plasticky. And I would say that that is the case, but, <laughs> no pun intended, but um, typing on it, it didn't really feel that way. So yes, it is plasticky, but it felt pretty solid to type on. There was very little in the way of pinging or creaking or anything like that in actual usage. It felt relatively solid despite the fairly average build quality of the case itself. The keycaps, on the other hand, are an entirely different story. They're really, really nice. PBT keycaps always feel nicer to type on than ABS, and these ones are no different, uh, especially because they're nice and thick. There's a lot of thickness to the walls of these keycaps, which helps contribute to that sense of solidity when typing with the board. In terms of other functionality, uh, the Bluetooth seems to work as advertised. Honestly, I didn't use it all that much. I mostly just use it at my desk, so I don't have a whole lot of reason to use the Bluetooth uh, beyond just a bit of testing. For that reason, I also did not hit the end of this keyboard's battery life, but if the uh, marketing material is to be believed, you can get at least 120 hours out of this keyboard between charges, which is plenty as far as I'm concerned. You saw in our little Bluetooth test there, when I was connected to my PC, I didn't notice any Bluetooth latency, which is very good. Connected to my phone, there was a little bit of noticeable latency. Nothing unexpected, nothing out of the ordinary. It's not uncommon for Bluetooth keyboards to exhibit a little bit of latency. For that reason, I of course recommend that, for gaming at least, you use the keyboard in wired mode, but for general usage, for sitting on your couch or something like that, uh, you know, um, typing or gaming on your TV across the room, I think this keyboard has you covered. Anything else to talk about? We talked about the typing experience, talked about the Bluetooth. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about it. Oh, I will say the layout. The layout, yeah. 75% um, layout. Can't argue with it. It's a good thing. Uh, I liked having those dedicated F row keys. I liked having the dedicated arrow keys. It reminded me why 75% is, um, for me, a more uh, useful layout than a 60% board. I use 60% boards all the time, but I really do appreciate and make use of the additional physical keys on a 75% board. All right, that's about it. That's really all I have to say. So it's time to run down the pros and the cons of the ACO 3084. And as we do around here, let's start positive with the pros. First thing I want to call out, of course, is that highly space efficient 75% layout. Like I was just describing, it has tangible 
usability benefits over a 60% layout by having those dedicated physical F row keys, arrow keys, and some of the nav cluster over on the right hand side. This is actually, like I said, it's really beneficial for me when I'm doing things like editing video, for instance. At the same time, you save space compared to a 10 keyless board, um, but you're only giving up three physical keys in the process. So, gotta give props to the 75% layout. Definitely a favorite of mine. Second thing that I really appreciate about this board was the genuine cherry switches. Um, for me personally, it's not such a big thing because there's a whole world of mechanical switches out there, many of which I personally prefer to cherry switches. But that being said, I know that many people put a lot of stock in the cherry brand name, and there is a certain degree of reliability that you know you're getting with cherry switches and the history behind that name. So you do you know, pretty much always end up paying significantly more for genuine cherry switches. Uh, and so that's an important factor when considering the value of a board like this. While we're on the subject of quality, let's talk about those lovely keycaps, those really nice PVT die sub caps. As I explained, they are nice and thick, thick walled caps that feel good and solid to type on. No flex there. A nice finish under the fingers. A little bit smoother, to be honest, than other PBT caps I've used. But that might be partially because I've been using it interchangeably with the mass drop control, which has some very roughly textured caps, which I also really like for what it's worth. But um, the caps on this board, though different, are nice. Aesthetically, I think they look nice too. I understand that the retro gray beige look might not be for everybody, but for me, it hits all the right notes because that's what I grew up with. So I appreciate the retro aesthetic of these keycaps in addition to the quality. I also have to give the Akko 3084 props for its wired and wireless functionality. When we were testing out the Bluetooth there, you saw it took me a few minutes to figure it out exactly, but once it was working, it was very easy and quick to swap between the USB wired mode to the Bluetooth mode and then swap between memorized devices in the Bluetooth mode. So lots of flexibility and good functionality there. And finally, it would be quite frankly irresponsible of me to not mention what might be the greatest single strength of this keyboard, and that is this amazing keycap puller. <laughs> Just look at it. Look at it. Meow. Meow. <laughs> um, yeah, but jokes aside, I mean, whatever, it's a it's a wired keycap or a wire type keycap puller. Functionally, it's fine. I just, I'm just tickled pink by it. That's all. I had to give it a shout out here. There are, of course, a handful of drawbacks to this product as well, as with any product, really. The first is the average build quality in that plastic case. It's not bad, per se. It certainly gets the job done, but it does feel a bit at odds with the really high quality keycaps and the nice high quality cherry switches. It just feels like it's letting the rest of the ensemble down a bit. It's a bit plasticky, a bit hollow. It'd be nice to see some more metal on this board perhaps um, so that that average build quality was just a little bit underwhelming for me. More significantly perhaps, this board lacks backlighting and this is something that I missed. I'm a touch typist generally. I don't have to look at my fingers in order to type. So you might wonder what's the purpose of a backlight besides aesthetics. Um, but honestly, even as a touch typist, there are times where uh, if you're you know switching between keyboards with different layouts, like I often do, it's nice to very quickly be able to look down in a darkened room and just confirm where a key like I don't know, the home key is, 
on the 75% board versus some other layout that I'm using. Or just generally when you're typing, sometimes your hand might get a little lost. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but for a quick moment, you're just a little bit unsure where you are. It's nice to be able to glance down and reorient. And I do that pretty automatically without even thinking about it. But in a darkened room with this keyboard and no backlighting, I did find that I was occasionally having to search for a key. Um, occasionally. So functionally, the lack of a, a backlight did impact me to some noticeable degree. Um, of course, it is wired for LEDs. You can add your own. But that's a lot of hassle. Why would you go to that hassle? Just buy a board with a backlight. So the lack of the backlight on the Echo 3084 does uh, impact and detract from its overall value, in my opinion. And finally, I have to say I'm disappointed that there's no English manual included with this keyboard because, once again, that did impact my experience uh, of using this keyboard. I was unable to figure out how to use the onboard firmware-based macro recording functionality because uh, the manual is only in Chinese and the way the flowchart is laid out uh, in the manual for, for how to use that feature is really hard to use, like Google Translate, the picture functionality to figure out. Um, and quite honestly, yeah, I shouldn't really have to do that anyway. I shouldn't have to go that extra mile just to figure out how to use an advertised feature of the board. It should either be included in an English manual, in the box, or bilingual manual, or at the very least there should be some supplement that you can go to online, either on the store page or on the manufacturer's website that describes how to use those features. It shouldn't be that difficult, especially since you know, these are being sold and marketed to an English-speaking audience. Uh, and it would be great to see proper support uh, for English speakers uh, being able to figure out those features. And my last con here, I'm not even going to put on the list because it's kind of a non-issue. It was going to be that this board is pretty expensive at its listed price. In fact, $160 for this keyboard is ludicrous. Nobody should pay that for this board. Not that it's a bad board, just that it's a feature set, uh, and, you know, build quality. They don't justify that price point. There's a lot of better options at that price point. However, I've noticed that it's pretty much always discounted on Banggood to about $100 or thereabouts, which is a much more palatable price. And then, of course, if you use the coupon code that's down in the video description and at the top of the comments, that'll knock off another 20 bucks and bring the price of the Aqua 3084 down to $80. And at that price, I have no complaints about the value. So price is not making my cons list. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so you've heard the pros, you've heard the cons, we've talked about the usage of the board, you've seen it in action. What is my final verdict on the Echo 3084? Well, it's fine. It's a fine keyboard. I didn't find it deeply inspiring. It didn't make me really want to type on it over some of the other boards I have in to test, but I did find it to generally be of good quality. Um, the plastic case notwithstanding, I thought that the typing experience felt pretty good. The keycaps were really, really nice. The Bluetooth, despite being an older 3.0 standard, worked just fine. And of course, the big kicker is that it's a 75% board. And you will be hard pressed to find a 75% board for any less than 80 bucks. You do tend to pay a premium for these slightly less common layouts simply because they are not um, subject to the same economies of scale that you get when you're looking at like a 10 keyless board or something like that. So at the $80 price point, if you're looking for a well-made keyboard with cherry switches especially and uh, the backlight 
isn't critical for you, then yeah, absolutely. I would recommend the ACO 3084. Uh, it's, like I said, well made, works well, and it's kind of the only game in town with that feature set at this price point. So why not? And that, my friends, brings us to the end of yet another relaxing review. If you want to check out the ACO 3084, there are, of course, links down in the video description and at the top of the comments. And hey, if you purchase the keyboard through those links, a portion of your purchase comes back to support the channel, which, of course, I very much appreciate. And if you'd like to save a bit of money, you will find discount codes down there that will save you an additional $20, bringing the price of this board to a very reasonable $80. So make sure to take advantage of those coupon codes. Special thanks, of course, to banggood.com for sending over the review sample that we took a look at today. And very special thanks to each and every one of you for watching. I hope you found this video informative, and I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.